Right, so there are two states of flow. One is a laminar state. Laminar is just the Latin word for layer. So the flow, you can imagine flow in a pipe, for example. You can imagine layers of fluid flowing past each other. The one right in the center flowing fastest and the one right at the wall flowing slowest. In fact, an infinitesimally small layer closest to the wall not flowing at all. It's called the, the no-slip condition at the wall because of viscosity. Uh, but if, if you measured the velocity across the pipe, you'd see the velocity changes from zero at the wall to a maximum in the center. And if at any one point in the pipe or in a jet, you put it some sort of probe that measured the velocity as a function of time, if the flow is laminar, then uh, you wouldn't see any variation, you'd see a, a steady velocity. But as soon as it begins to transition to turbulence, you'd see some perturbations enter into the signal. And finally, when it became fully turbulent, it would, it would become, um, the signal would look sort of random. You'd have, depending on the speed of the flow, a whole range of frequencies uh, occurring in varying amplitudes. And so the flows become turbulent. And now why, why is this interesting, or for, how does this uh, have any bearing on engineering? Well, in many ways, turbulence, uh, people who study this like to say this is a ubiquitous phenomena in both nature and engineering. So, for example, the, the flow over surfaces of vehicles, automobiles, airplanes, ships, uh, generally speaking, are turbulent. And if the flow is turbulent, the drag on the surface, the, the friction between the fluid and the, and the surface is higher than if the flow were laminar. And the drag requires more energy to propel the, the vehicle through the fluid. Fluid being either a liquid or a gas, uh, the same laws apply. Um, so one of the things people who study turbulence try to do is to control it and so that, uh, for example, you could try to reduce the drag by reducing the effect of the turbulence on the surface. Another application of importance to engineering is heat transfer. Uh, if the flow, if you're transferring heat, say, from a surface into a fluid, Let's say you're trying to cool some device, like an electronic device. And if you have no, in, in, let's say you're blowing air past this device with a fan to try to cool it. If the flow were laminar, uh, it wouldn't cool nearly as efficiently as, as it would if the flow is turbulent. Turbulence transports heat in, in a much more efficient way than laminar. Uh, flow does. Uh, you can imagine that a, a particle of fluid next to the surface that gets heated by the surface, if the flow is turbulent, it has a tendency to, to, to move perpendicular to the main direction of flow. Whereas if the flow is laminar, it's just moving along that same layer and it's not transporting the heat away from the surface. Um, Another application is in, in the lift of vehicles, say, uh, most particularly for airplanes. Uh, if you have turbulent flow, you, you've probably seen on the wings of airplanes sometimes little, little metal strips out on the front leading edge of the, of the airplane. What they're trying to do actually is to keep make, make the flow turbulent over the top surface of the, of the airplane. Uh, and that enhances the lift uh, when, you, when you can have turbulent flow because the flow doesn't separate from the, from the surface as quickly. Um, those are just some applications. Other applications where, where um, you, you'd be concerned would be you know, environmental problems like uh, pollution, pollution from stacks of coal bu Coal burning from power plants. How does how do that that all those pollutants get dispersed into the atmosphere? 
or if you have a nuclear power plant accident like they had at Fukushima. Um, turbulence enters into the dispersion of the, the nuclear material. So anyway, I, I studied turbulence.